I am making some sorrel and I purchased some dry ones from the store with some uh, ginger. And first I do is boil the ginger, then I add sorrel and then I let it sit for a few hours. Um, then I strain it off and uh, this will look like and then I sweeten it. And this is when you would just add your alcohol. So if you'd like rum, you can put some rum, you can put some wine, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and that's it. Hey guys, so I am drinking the sour that I made this morning and um, it is chilled. I have some ice in it because it wasn't cold enough for me, but um, I had to keep it in the fridge longer. It'd be good, but I am enjoying it. It tastes really good. Now that um, I think it's a close, I think it's close to my mom's. My mom is the best when it comes to making sorrow. It is a uh, drinks that I um, associate most with my country, but I know a lot of island drink sorrel as well as a lot of um, African countries that drink it as well, but they make it different. Jamaica would typically put it with ginger and we add alcohol as well. I did not add, add any alcohol because I've been off the alcohol for almost a year. Guys, it's, it's about a little over a week and it will be a whole year that I have not drank any alcohol. But I have a wine that I'm going to crack at some point. Uh, maybe, maybe New Year's Eve. I don't know. But there's no alcohol in this. But a lot of times when I would make it, I'll put a little bit of rum or some wine in it. Um, and it gives another kick to it. But it is lovely. I love drinking it this time of the year. And I'm, you know, you're going to see a lot of this. <laughs> and it's, it's also good. It's, you know, it's a good drink. Anyway, let's talk about the cyclone. Now... I've read up to, I think I'm up to 23 or 24 books by Alexander House. Alexander House, just she gets it. When she writes her romance, she knows how to engage you into the romance and have you um, wanting more and also have you known it is a romance. But I think the Slycon um, series is probably the most trauma-driven um, kind of storyline but she didn't forget that it's romance and that's one thing i appreciate about this series because oftentimes when author focus a lot on trauma sorry about that when they focus a lot on trauma they often forget um the romance 
um, and the storyline becomes more of a literary than it is the actual romance. So we're going to start with the first book. The first book, I did not like this couple direction. Um, now in this, they all, all the characters in all three books are, have experienced some form of childhood trauma and this influence how they love how they view relationship what they bring to a relationship what they take away when they get into a relationship um how they even treat their family and all that happened in in this now the first one um flagrant flagrant <laughs> flagrant <laughs> i don't know why i'm gonna have tongue tie with that one but anyway flagrant is i think is um the one that I thought the couple needed time. Um, in this, you have a character, Polo. Polo has experienced uh, some really tough things that happened to him as a child, how he saw his parents behave, um, the violence between his, his parents and the treatment. And he grew up in a messy situation, but he also grew up with the woman that he's with, Kendra, they met at a young age. So this is a couple that knew each other from they were children where they grew up together. And so they know each other's pain, they know each other's struggle, they knew what they've been through, but they have self harm in each other. And there's, there's a bit of a codependent on each other that when one believe one deserve it and the other one can't stop themselves from conflicting the pain to the other. It is a chaotic situation and I thought this one where there were moments where they were separated but I wanted somehow them to be in healthy relationship with other people as they were healing. You know, the, the author did the responsible thing by um, making sure that um, there was some counseling, there was some processing of why they did what they did, especially in this case, Polo. Why is he doing this and why does he constantly hurt the woman that he's with? Um, there's a thing, a twist at the end that I wasn't a big fan of, but I, I thought it was an interesting way because um, there's one person in discussion that is always going to be there um, compared to the other one who is it's not visible but it's just as painful that kind of deal so i i thought that was interesting but I, for some reason i just kind of wanted them to separate it longer and have experienced some some form of healthy relationship separate but it is what it is with this one so it wasn't my favorite the second book, absolutely love. When I say I love it, I don't think I've ever given any, any book in a long time that is considered a romance of five star. I love technical. Drava, Drava, and Stevie. It is. It gives romance where there is that fairy tale aspect of it. But then it also like you learn so much about both characters and things that they've experienced. You have a, a man who is, you know, this amazing basketball player, but he's also a person that has done things as a child that has haunted him and prevented him from sleeping and, and functioning in a way that he is the the, 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 um, the care for other people. He's taking care of his entire family, his entire family he hires. Everyone that works for him or support him is a family member. He's constantly taking care of the community that he was from, constantly doing things for other people because he's in a way making up for things that he, he couldn't change or situation that happened to him. So he's always give, 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 give and never quite receiving. And then here come Stevie and this just dramatic moment that happened between them that kind of like set off a series of events with them. And you just felt the romance, even as the, the, the things that's happened to them, how they, you learn about their trauma as a kid. Even when all that is happening, the romance is not missing. It's there. You were rooting from them from day one. It's just, ah, uh, it was just such a, I love it. I love everything about this story. Um, it is such a, not over the top. There's no extra off the wall drama. It's more of family and money and how sometimes that can take over um, people's control over you. But also showing that, it, it, he's a good guy. I like that romance where 
the main character he's a good guy he's not you know like the first one with polo where po 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 <laughs> polo I, I still feel so hard with my polo but Javon is just ah uh, ah uh, love it then we get to the third one and when I tell you I follow the author on Twitter and when I tell you when she announced this I was like what nah she out of her damn mind. I really felt like she went there because in my eyes, I'm like, I'm a Big South fan. And I'm thinking, she about to give Big, fan, uh, Big South either some heart attack, <laughs> a stroke, or something. Because this is his daughter, Ella. And then I'm thinking, not Kim Raggedy, Raggedy out of control son. How are those two are going to be in a romance that's going to make sense, that's not going to make me like side eye a few times. I, I literally was thinking of how all this is going to make sense. And sh sh look, I learned some things about personal. I learned some things that I had to Google to find out how true some of this is. And it was actually true. This is when I say you have one of the best author, period. You know how I love my James Baldwin. And James Baldwin have a way of writing sex in a way um, it is, and it's used in such a powerful way that you oftentimes are sometimes uncomfortable when he's talking about it. And then you have this romance author where you expect sex. But then when she talks about sex in a way that is therapeutic, like sex in a way that is helping someone who's struggling with anger and um, anger issue and, and um, self-destruction at times and how sex can be used in a way to control that, I was just like, oh, okay. So you're getting kinky in this story, but we're learning something at the same time because I really did not realize that that is a form of therapy. Yeah, how old am I? <laughs> like, you know, so in my mind, I was completely taken back by that, but it was done in a way where I thought it was so cute. I thought it was sexy as hell. Um, I thought it, it made sense for these two characters who are, um, you know, especially Armand, where he's experienced some form of, um, I guess, we, celebrity status for the wrong reason um, as a, a young basketball player. And then you have Ella, whose father is this big superstar. So she's always been in a in, in public figure, especially her mother, who is, you know, a little trifling, but her mom is a well-known model. So she's always had camera in her face. So there's this, there's some kind of um, connection that made sense between them. But that kinky stuff. But Ella, Lord Ella, I didn't see that coming though. <laughs> but... Ella, Lord. Ella, Ella, Ella. <laughs> Every time I said Ella, I just want to sing that song. But I liked it. I liked it. I liked them together. I liked the healing that they were going through and the process of getting to know each other in, in, a, in a not so traditional way, but it makes sense for these two characters. So overall, that was a big thumbs up for me. Um, of course, it's not my favorite compared to technical. Technical was like, technical <laughs> was my thing. Um, so yeah, but overall, read the series. I think it's going to be different for everybody um, that who, you know, when you when you read this kind of series. Um, but what I would say is they're all a page turner. They, you all, you know, you're going to learn something different, something new because it does deal with childhood trauma and we don't think about stuff like that often but a lot of times how your you saw love and relationship as a child do influence how you see it as adult how you engage in it how you value relationship all that stuff so yeah i'm gonna end this here i'm gonna finish drinking my sorrow <laughs> and i am going to uh finish doing some clean up I've been cleaning up guys I've been cleaning up and I've been reading I'm almost done 
with uh, honey and spice. It's, it's taking me a little longer, um, but we, we're going to finish this by tomorrow. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys.